within you is the power to do things you never dreamed to be possible this power becomes available to you as soon as you change your beliefs with these words in mind i proudly invite our honorable chief guest for the day dr william selvamurthy a notable eminent personality and winner of plentiful awards to share his words of wisdom so my dear students distinguished faculties and the trustees of this great organization vivekananda institute of professional studies and the vice chairman mr sunit bats and also the founder and the chairperson of this great institution dr sc bats and all the very distinguished invitees and particularly ms supriya madan who is responsible for me to be here today cuz i held a meeting with her in mount abu in brahma kumari samaj in one of the conferences it was actually on science and spirituality so that is the meeting in which she was also a participant and uh, i was giving a talk over there so then she suggested that why not i visit here this great institution which is very close to my house i live in sector 9 here <laughs> so but i have never been to this institute so she said why don't you come over here and i look for an occasion what a great occasion today the 80th 88th birth anniversary of a great visionary leader you human uh, man embodiment of human values and also a great innovator so this day is being celebrated as a very important day this day is celebrated by united nations as world students day your day it's is not their day it's your day because dr kalam was so close to students he enjoyed the most he loved always to be with students school students and also college students university students because he thought this is the fertile ground in which if you sow a seed that will yield fruitful results this is the mind which is so malleable where you can mold any change you can bring a psychic change in this mind so that is why vivekananda as well as as well as uh, dr kalam focused on students the future generations because they found a lot of hope in you so today also i want to give that message we have tremendous hope in you children because you are going to be the future leaders in humanity who will give the directions who will create a culture who will create a new world order which will be seen by global health now everybody is healthy global health everyone is healthy global harmony everyone is harmonious with each other irrespective of the nation the race or the sex or the gender or any of this so he are going to create that new world order which will be healthy happy peaceful and prosperous so that is what is the expectation from all of us on this world students day <coughs> that we expect a new world order to be created by all of us together particularly you students and this institute vivekananda institute of professional studies is playing a very very significant role human service rendering human service to groom the future leadership in many domains like information technology and i found on management mass communication and uh, journalism these are the uh, these are the tools these are the channels by which you can bring in a change transformation not only in our nation in the humanity that is why i am i am so happy to be here at this very esteemed institution vivekananda institute of professional studies my salutations to all the the faculties over here 
And this institute enjoys a very high reputation. I was told that more than 400 publications every year. And your students, alumni, are doing extremely well. So these are the landmarks. These are the criteria by which a university or an institution is ranked. So at that yardstick, this Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies is doing extremely well. So I must thank also Dr. Uh, Siddharth Mishra, who has also been associated with this for a very long time, and all the trustees who are responsible for building this great temple of institution, the Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies. Set an example, a role model for all of us, and how he has been a great teacher and also a great learner. He was a continuous learner. You know, if he's going to give a lecture on health, he will call all health experts and understand that. If he's going to talk about hepatitis, and he will understand what all current information available, calling experts, talking to them on phone. So like this, he was a learner himself. He was a student all through his life. So that is why, you know, being a student is always a great thing, not only to being a teacher. So even a teacher has to be a learner all through, because knowledge keeps leaping. So I'm going to take through my journey of association with Dr. Kalam, in which I have seen a great human being, a great scientist, a great president, and also a great friend. This is what is the going to be my talk. And uh, so this is, today is the World Students' Day. I would like to focus on science and humanism for national development because technology drives the doctrines of a nation, both in peace and war. In war, what technologies you have will determine your doctrines, your strategies. Similarly, what your technologies has in peace time will determine your strength, economic strength, and also even military strength. So this great institution, and I'm so happy, that I'll come more often to talk and share my thoughts with all of you. And I, I'm now in Amity University. We will build a formal relationship with, between uh, this Vivekananda Institute of Professional Studies and Amity Universities. And uh, Dr. Mishra is already no, uh, very close to the Amity. So we will, through him, we will build that partnership with this institution because we have a very strong IT, mass communication, journalism, and many, many disciplines which are similar to what you have here. So we like to partner, but I was fascinated to see your mission. The mission is not just giving degrees, not just churn out the young professionals from this institution, but your mission is actually to man making. That is what's the purpose of education. It's just not only to make yourself deployable on a job, but then how good a human being you make out of this institution, the learning. So that is what is the mission you have, man-making, character-building, nation-building. So I was fascinated when I read your mission, uh, Mr. Watts, that this is your mission, and this is what our mission is also. Now, Swami Vivekananda, in which this institution has been named, there is a lot of similarities between Dr. Kalam and Dr. Vivekananda, Mr. Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda. Education is not the amount of information that is put into your brain and runs right there. You know, you give a lot of information. Today, you see the Google and then look at the information. Lot of information uh, explosion. You don't know which one to see, which one to read, which one to focus on. So there's a lot of explosion on material knowledge. But if you really, we must have a life building, man making, character making, assimilation of ideals. So this is education. It's just not only what you see in uh, the open source of knowledge or in the books or classrooms, but learning how to lead a good life. That is the greatest learning outcome a student can have from an educational institution. And that is being done here. And what we want is Western science coupled with Vedanta, Brahmacharya as the guiding motto and also Shraddha and faith in one's own life. That is what you have put, self-belief. You should believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything in life. This is what Dr. Kalam showed. This is what Dr. Ashok Chohan is showing now. And this is what we have learned through many leaders who have accomplished in various spheres of life. So his message to youth, my faith is in the younger generation. 
See, Dr. Kalam also had the faith in younger generation more than the contemporaries and peers. Because they, he knows that the potentials are great in you, greater than all of us who have now in the eve of our life. So his faith is in the younger generation, the modern generation. Out of them will come my workers. So Vivekananda is looking for you. Not this institute, from this institute, we must have Vivekanandas, young Vivekanandas. And they will work out the whole problem like lions. So we are what our thoughts have made us. So take care of what you think. Words are secondary. Thoughts live. They travel far. So now we are going to think about certain thoughts. We are going to deliberate on some of the thoughts Dr. Kalam also generated in his life. Just change the next one, please. Now you see two great personalities, Vive, Swami Vivekananda and Dr. Kalam. If you see their ideals, you will find many similarities. They love to teach. You know, Dr. Kalam spent most of his time with students at, in schools, in colleges, in universities, and also Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda focused on that. Both of them had very high belief in God and they were simple, humble, and wise, similarities. Excellent orators, both of them communicated not just only through words, but they communicated through the soul. They communicated through uh, the mind and heart. Abdul Kalam, a major role in nuclear and missiles making India more powerful, and he, may, he took India, Indian spirituality, to the global world. So there's a lot of similarity between this great soul Dr. Kalam's address in one of the youth convention, impressed by these lines, Dr. Dr. Viveka, Swami Vivekananda's line, my name should not be made prominent. They were telling that everyone wants, the ego says that my name should be heard everywhere and seen everywhere. But what Swami Vivekananda said, which impressed Dr. Kalam, my name should not be made prominent. It is my idea that I want to be realized. So it is your ideas is very important. So think, think, arise, awake, and stop not till your goal is reached. So this is what is the message. Now taking back to Dr. Kalam, and as I keep through the sojourn, I will keep talking about the lesson which, the model which you can learn from each slide. This slide shows he is from a humble family, and his father and mother, and his Bro uh, brother and sister, here is Dr. Kalam, the cute personality, the young little, little cute toddler sitting over there, Dr. Kalam. You know what he says, Dr. Kalam, to quote, I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. So the parents have a big role to play. And in, from my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep, kind deep kindness and also as did my uh, three brothers and sisters did. So parents, all of you, you know, sitting here, they are already parents. Some of you will, will become parents soon. So the parenting has got a big role to shape up the future, the humanity. So that is why it is, it is very, very important that you people assimilate, learn from your parents who are the first teachers, since we are talking about the teachers. This is the place where Dr. Kalam lived, his early childhood. It's a very small, modest house in which he lived in Rameshwaram, which is only 80 kilometers from my residence, which is in Sivakasi. And then he studied in this school, very small, simple, modest school. And he had great teachers. He also had the blessings of great teachers. Then after that, he moved into the St. Uh, Joseph College in 1950. And then he also went into Madras Institute of Technology and did his uh, aerospace engineering. Then he went for, uh, he wanted to be a fighter pilot. He went to, he went to Air Force Selection Board. There's an Air Force Selection Board in Derado. But he was not selected, so he was so dejected. The first interview which he gave, he was not selected. But he was so shocked, so he went to ashram. He went to Sivananda Ashram on the way from Derado. And then he got that courage, spiritual courage. What you talk about self-belief. He was, he was given that self-belief by that visit to that ashram, which transformed him. 
and he said you are made for something better than becoming a fighter pilot you might become an air marshal or, or air chief but today we got Bharat Ratna we got president and we got a good human being from Dr. Kalam so don't get dejected the message you derive from this slide is life destiny shapes itself so destiny shaped his his life otherwise he would have been a fighter pilot maybe flying as Mirage or Sukhoi or Tejas <laughs> light combat aircraft but today you had that kind of the transformation so take life as it comes work for it but then take life as it comes so then he went into Hindustan Aeronautics Limited then joined DRDO then 40 years in DRDO and space just change the next one okay so now I would like to see him as a great scientist innovator because today is day of innovation thanks to the government of India they have declared this day and Ministry of Human Resource Development as day of innovation so a scientist a good human being a great teacher an unparalleled leader and also a great president who added value to the chair of presidentship next So when you look at this, his life, he was an embodiment of all values, ethos, human values which you would like to see. He was an embodiment. Integrity to the highest core. Just to narrate one example, his relatives when he was president staying in the Rashtrapati Bhavan, they came to visit him. And then they stayed with him for a week and also did some sightseeing. Then Dr. Kalam wrote a check for the, the rent, you know, the, the tariff which they would have paid for, his, for their stay here in the Rashtra Balibam. That is the order of integrity he had. All his money, the salary went to an ashram, orphanage. It went to an orphanage. So that is the kind of uh, integrity he had. He's a man of compassion. Just to narrate an incident, we had developed uh, airborne early warning and control system, AVAX, and the flight test flight was on, on an Embraer aircraft our antenna put on that then the Air Force pilots and also Air Force personnel and also DRDO scientists doing the experiments when it is flying to see the interception and jamming all that they were trying so at that time there was an accident of this aircraft so the all the, the occupants died so immediately Dr. Kalam was the chief of DRDO and immediately the first thing he went stayed and also consoled the whole family of the people who are affected by this and there are many examples and anywhere even even his pion if they have some problem immediately he will help him so that kind of embodiment of compassion simple life he will be very he will be at ease to talk to a president of a country and also to pion of his uh, uh, office that is the kind of ease with which he was able to live a simple life and also humble life then he is also a spiritual leader. He didn't have boundaries, he didn't have barriers, even though he belongs to a particular uh, religious sect, but he never had a psychological barriers. He was at ease with Hindus, he was ease with uh, the, uh, the Sikhs, wherever he goes, Jains, you know, I used to be his spiritual companion. Wherever he goes to spiritual activities, he used to uh, take me with him. So I learned a lot from him. He was very open with those spiritual leaders. And Mount Abu, he visited five, six times in Mount Abu. Uh, and I will show some of those photographs there. So he is a spiritual leader. He is a missile man of India, the father of missile technology in the country today. If you are very, very strong in missile technology or space technology, Dr. Kalam's signature is there. The foundation has been laid by Dr. Kalam. Agni, Prithvi, Akash, Nav, Trishul, Brahmos, Interceptor Missile, Shaurya, Astra, you know, you see all these missiles, different types for different application is all the father of this technology is Dr. Kalam. He laid the foundation. He is an unmatched leader who generated many leaders. You know, he is, he generated a good leader will, will generate new leadership. So that's what he said. He did, he's an exceptional orator. He doesn't speak, you know, from only here or lips. He speaks from the heart. Heart, mind and soul he conveys with conviction so he was a great orator as well and he was an inspirational writer he has written many books some of them I'll show you so I had the opportunity of closely working with him 
as a, as, a, as a colleague, as a subordinate, as a friend, and also as a, he was my teacher, as a, as a student of him. So I had the great opportunity just to narrate a few examples how good a human being he is. As a how, I'll start with the how good a good friend he is. You know, he was my boss, he was the president also. I was to advise him in Rashtrapati Bhavan in certain issues. And uh, he used to come to uh, the wedding of my first daughter, Geeta, and then second daughter, he was president. That time he was chief of DRU. So the second time when he said, if I come, all SPGs, black cats, everybody will come, your whole marriage will be disturbed. So I would host uh, the reception for your daughter in Rashtrapati Bhavan. So being a president, I was only a scientist in DRU. That is the kind of the, uh, the closeness and companionship he shows to people who work with him. I enjoy that. Similarly, he's a good musician. He plays veena and also he writes poems. He, written, he has written many poems which are compiled in the form of a book. So like he will say suddenly we will be walking together in Mughal garden. Salamurti, I'll tell a poem. Uh, he will see a flower. See that flower which has fallen there. You know, see the mother flower is talking to the child flower. Then child flower is asking the question to the mother flower. Oh, oh mother, why, why are we every time blossoming, giving fragrance, people come, plug it, they put on, uh, sometimes they, pull, they step on us, but still we are blossoming. Then the mother flower says to the child flower, and oh beautiful child, that if we don't blossom, if we don't give the fragrance, the whole humanity will not exist. They will all become animals and wild. That is why, you know, you have to keep on giving. It's your, your duty to make flower blossom and then give the fragrance. That is the kind of poetry. He will immediately write poetry. We were doing an innovation, uh, making a roadmap for DRU, right at 2 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., our meetings used to be like this. So DRU directors, all the directors, we were looking at the next five-year roadmap for DRU. So at that time, he immediately he, he said, I, I saw a dream, Selvamurthy. I'll tell you the dream. Uh, I saw a dream first. The mother India is wearing all jewels and everything, riding on an elephant. And so many followers from different countries following. So this I saw. Immediately after half an hour, I saw a different dream in which you know, the, the mother India is walking, not an elephant, walking, this white dress, and then there's no followers crying. This is what is the transformation. We have to bring back that glory of India becoming a developed India. So you see how he conveys the message, and he keeps dreaming about everything. And he's a great musician. He has composed some songs, which I, I was fortunate to sing in presence of Chambangudi Srinivas Iyer, uh, then uh, also Lalguri Jairaman and uh, he, he is Balamuli Krishna. So you know, he is also a great uh, singer and musician. And this is where he is singing here. Next. Now coming to this science and spirituality, he always wanted to blend science and spirituality together. Because science looks to, the, to realize the truth through experimentation, whereas the spirituality also tries to realize the ultimate truth by experiential learning. But where is the meeting point? The meeting point is silencing your mind. Once you silence the mind, the unification occurs. Science without spirituality is, is, no, uh, is not good to the humanity at all. Next. So this is Dr. Kalam, the missile man who developed the rocket technology in the country today. As early as in 70s, early 70s, Vigram Sarabhai, the father of the space technology today. Now he is the one who picked him up from DRU and took him there. And see, this was the type of technologies. Now we are talking about Agni, Prithvi, and so on. This was the technology which was carried in a bicycle to the launch pad. So now today we have so many other technology developed. Next one. But the message is, he had learned from his leaders, Vigram Sarabhai, Satish Dhawan, and Brahm Prakash. These are the leaders. So you have to learn from your leaders, you know, the people, the faculties. They should become your role model. And the faculty should set the role model for your students. 
these are the range of missiles. So once you look at a missile, you see only a platform going up, a rocket going up. But a lot of innovation goes since it's a day of innovation. First you need materials which can withstand the vagaries of those environment, the space environment, cosmic radiation, solar radiation. So you need materials. You need propulsion to reach a target of 6,000 kilometers with a payload of one ton. You need the propulsion technology. Control, you have to control the missile, otherwise it will topple and go like any other rocket. So you need to have control, guidance, navigation, platform integration, that is the, the low payload integration, separation. All these are, a lot of science goes into that, modeling, simulation. So this is technology. These innovations, because for love of money, you cannot get such kind of restricted technologies from anywhere. So you have to develop it. India has developed, Dr. Kalan played that uh, a role of innovator to bring these technologies. Next. Oh, just show that. Go back. This is Prithini Nisai. But you just only see a missile going up. Just can you click here? This is long range missile, 6,000 kilometers. This is Dr. Kalam's uh, missile. Next. Now, when he developed the missile, he was also looking for what do I give to the society? One is security of the country, security of Indians, sovereignty, but what do we give? So, we, we developed in DRU from the cone of the missile, which has to withstand the high temperature and pressure, we developed a lightweight prosthesis for a polio, polio children. Next, uh, this is what is the, uh, uh, now you will see a, a metallic caliper, can you just click this? A metallic caliper will, it's a very heavy metallic caliper. So the children will find it very difficult for you children who are afflicted. So what we developed, this is about 300, uh, 3 kilograms, but we developed a 300 gram lightweight prosthesis, which I showed you in the earlier slide. So the message is, you have to look at what do I give, even if you develop a destructive missile from this, what we can give. We developed a telemetry for the uh, uh, telemedicine. And also we developed database. We developed a cytoscan uh, where patent recognition, artificial intelligence was used. Next one. So we developed a Kalam Raju stent. More than a lack of patients with coronary artery disease is now living with Kalam Raju stent, indigenously developed. So DRDO, which develops a weapon system, we have also developed a lot of spin-offs. Next. We also did a very major project in Mount Abu uh, with the Global Hospital Research Center on 524 coronary artery disease patients. Can we cause regression of the disease by lifestyle intervention, which includes low fat, high fiber diet, regular aerobic exercise, and also uh, Raja Yoga meditation. By using this, we took care of three risk factors, sedentary living, the dyslipidemia, which is the imbalance in fat, and the third one is stress. So we took care of it, and ultimately we demonstrated regression of the coronary artery disease by lifestyle intervention, where he used to come himself as scientific advisor to review these projects. Uh, next. Then we also developed for uh, cancer patients, when you give radiotherapy, you are not only killing cancer cell, you are killing the normal cell in the vicinity. So how do you selectively sensitize the cancer cell and so that it doesn't affect the normal cell? What we did, Institute of Nuclear Medicine and Life Sciences in Mass, which I headed as director and also then as chief controller, then we developed a simple 2-deoxy-D glucose, which is an analog of glucose, which gets into the body so before you give a radiotherapy, you give this analog of glucose, 2-deoxy-D glucose. Then in the blood now you have two glucose, normal glucose, which can enter the cell, give energy to the cell. The other one is analog glucose, 2-deoxy-D glucose, which can go to the cell, into the cell, but cannot give energy. So cancer cell being hungry for energy, it takes more of 2-deoxy-D glucose, 
but it doesn't get energy because it doesn't give ATP. So thereby it's a weaker cell. So when you give the intensity of radiation can be optimized in such a way at that dose, it kills the weaker sensitized the cancer cell rather than keeping and sparing all the normal cell in the vicinity. Next slide. Now this has gone to production and Redis laboratory at Hyderabad is now commercializing this drug. Yeah, it's already commercialized. Next. Yeah, this is the uh, drug. Now cytoscan, what I said, when the missile flies, it takes into reference. If I have to send this to a particular target, I give reference. You see this and go to that site. So we use that for cancer cell detection. Like a pathologist has to see thousands of slides like cancer cervix. All these pap smear has to be seen. So how do I help the pathologist? So we did the pattern recognition. A normal cell library we created and then we created the cancer cell. It has different contours, different morphology, textures and contrast. So we, we developed a huge database, data science we applied. Then we use this scanning pattern recognition. So if this helped cytoscan, help to help the pathologist which we used in missiles, now it is helping the pathologist for cancer detection. So only the doubtful slides now a pathologist has to see, not every slide. Next. We developed a titanium dental implant, we will keep moving so that I will, so this is Dr. Kalam. India became a nuclear power, why? Not because we wanted to show our any hegemonic uh, attitude or to show our nuclear power, we wanted to show our citizens that we have the capability to develop a nuclear weapon. We have the capability to, to attack any country if they venture on us for the first time. So no second, no first use. We have just made our doctrine, self-doctrine, no first use. So we became nuclear power in which Dr. Kalam played a very important role. He used to be in the attire of a brigadier. You, you might have seen in the earlier slide. So he played a pivotal role in India's transformation as a nuclear power. Next. He also visited the patients, hospitals, even though he's a missile man. He came to, we were doing an experiment there at uh, 153GH at hospital at Leh, Ladakh at 3,500 meters altitude. So he was seeing frostbite experiments which we were doing using aloe vera. Next. We developed uh, also the telemedicine next using telemetry. Next. 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 We developed agriculture. DRDO, you don't know that we developed 5,000 metric tons of vegetables in Ladakh using in the sub zero conditions, using hybrids, using trench technologies. We developed uh, these. And also hybrid cows. We developed hybrid goats for the soldiers as well as for the local people. Next. These are the trench technologies which we cultivated because everyone cannot afford a greenhouse, polyhouse. So make trenches, cultivate the hybrid seeds, cover it with white translucent polythene sheet during daytime when the sun is bright. Even in winter, sun is very bright. Soil gains the moisture. Night you cover it with black polythene sheet. You know, improvise the greenhouse. You have developed a greenhouse because black bodies doesn't reflect the heat back. So this is innovation. What I am telling is frugal innovations. A farmer cannot afford a greenhouse like this or a polyhouse like this, but we gave him a technology, all that he has to make is a trench, cultivate there, white translucent polythene sheet during daytime, night you cover with black polythene sheet, and the humidity and temperature will be maintained. This is innovation. Next. Similarly, we develop meals ready to eat, like MTR, Tasty Bites, Saras, Sachirwa, the ITC, they are marketing our technology, meals, just you have to warm it up and eat. This is a technology developed by DRDO. Next. Next. Nano initiative, I will just pass. Next. Next. So we had societal mission. Whenever there is a natural calamity, like a Bhuj earthquake, Latour earthquake, Orissa super cyclone, or Andhra Pradesh flood, immediately DRDO technologies will go there. I will be the first one to be sent there by Dr. Kalam. You go there with your food, with water, water purification system, and also with the medicines, doctors, psychologists. We had all communication system, HF communication system. So what I want to say is he's man of compassion. The first response has to go from DRDO. So that was the message from Dr. Kalam, and we created a number of societal missions in DRDO. Next. 
Next, this is a technology developed for avalanche victims. These are model village we develop. Like he used to talk about provision of urban amenities in rural areas. If country has to grow, six lakh villages have to grow, inclusive growth. So that will happen only villages grow. So we adopted a village, Nong village in Ladakh, and we gave our technologies and economic development happened. Next. These are some technologies which were given to them. This is the provision of urban amenities in rural areas, which was, he was very passionate about this scheme. Next. Then he gave the vision, technology vision 2020, how the country should move ahead in various technologies. Next. He was a voracious writer. These are some of the books which he has written. Every book, if you read, it will give a very big message. I would urge some of you to read, particularly Ignited Minds, The Wings of Fire, Technology Vision 2020, and a number of them. Next. And he was bestowed with all the awards were chasing him rather than he, he was chasing any award. So uh, he got the highest Bharat Ratna civilian award. Next. He was the king of many firsts, like he was the first president to undertake a journey in submarine, the first uh, president. He was the first president to undertake a sortie in the fighter aircraft, that is Sukhoi, Sukhoi 30. And he took lectures in the highest battlefield of Sayachin to the soldiers. He used to be a teacher for the soldiers also. Next. I will re read only two. Dream big as a person is useless without dreams. Dreams result into thoughts and thoughts into action. So first you have to dream. All of us know we never think, we never dream. First you dream to be what? Some, some want to be something in life. Ignited mind of youth is most important resource on the earth, above the earth, and below the earth. Those youth who have ignited mind and adopt these four tools can definitely become unique. So every one of you is unique. Realize that uniqueness and then realize it. Next. He always believed that India should become a developed nation. Developed not only economically, also spiritually. So development he always considered not just in material terms, but also in spiritual terms. The greatest tribute to Dr. Kalam would be to follow and propagate his mission. Next. So he, he enjoyed the most with students. That is why this day is celebrated as World Students Day. And because he loved to be with students and the students loved him a lot. Next. Self. I will just Self put this. And myself going to recite. Aridu, aridu, manida radal aridu, adaninum aridu. What away are the poet says? It's very rare. It's very rare to be created as a human being. It is very rare to be created as a human being. It is still more rare to be born without any deformity like blindness, deafness, and dumbness. Even if you are born without any such deformity like blindness, deafness, and dumbness, it is very, very rare to be blessed with yarn and education. Even if you are blessed with yarn and education, it is still rare to be blessed with the, with the will to do offerings, sacrifice, and tapas. If when you do offerings and tapas, the doors of heaven will open to greet you all. I, the Brahmakumar and my nation. I am a Brahmakumar and my Bharat. I am a Bharat. As a young citizen of India, armed with technology and knowledge and spirituality, and love for my nation, I realize small aim is the crime. I realize small aim is the crime. I will work, sweat for the great vision, the vision of transforming India into a developed nation with a double crown, with value system, purity, and prosperity. I am one of the citizens of billion, or only the vision will ignite the billion souls. 
it has, it has entered into me, that is, the vision has entered into me, the ignited soul, compared to any resource, is the most powerful resource on the earth, above the earth, and under the earth. I will keep the lamp of knowledge and spirituality burning to achieve the vision of developed India. Next. So this is the vision which he has given. Now I think I will just close it with the final message. Next. These are teachers and students must pick up this. I will leave these slides with you because these are resolution which you should have it in your mind on the day of World Students Day. I will plant at least five trees in my neighborhood and grow. I will always remember the importance of time. My motto will be, let not my winged days be spent in vain. So, you know, these are very good messages. I will leave it for you to read. I would request Mr. Watts to circulate it. Next. Next one. Next one. Now, the final message is, acquire and synthesize and apply knowledge. India is now becoming a knowledge superpower. In this new knowledge era, India will generate new knowledge, secure the knowledge through IPR, and also disseminate the knowledge to the next generation through education, and apply the knowledge for generating wealth, solving the problems of the society. So you must become one of those who will be involved in the transformation of India as a knowledge superpower. Also lay the strong foundation for your analytical ability. Don't just believe what is written, what is there in the Google message. Just you, you take that, but then analyze it, assimilate it, synthesize it and assimilate it. So this is how you become a part of that knowledge. So achieve that. Hard work and dedication, no substitute. You know, if Kalam has achieved so much, he used to work 20 hours a day. If you have to shine like a sun, you have to burn like a sun. First you have to burn like a sun. Then only you can shine like a sun. So you have to work hard. Then be passionate about your studies. You know, at this stage, you have to be passionate as students that this is the period in which you are developing yourself, laying the foundation. Live life fruitfully. You must have a purpose in life. That is why the dream, the purpose. Dream is not the one which you see during sleep. Dream is the one which doesn't allow you to sleep. So that is the dream which we want you to dream. And now finally, I'll give just two, two stories and we'll end. The first story is uh, three men laying the bricks. You know, I, I used to go to DRU labs when it was being built, some new labs. One of the labs in Bangalore, it was coming up, cabs. So one of the facilities were build, uh, getting built. So I went there. The physical construction was coming up. The bricks were being laid. So I was asking one of the laborers, hundreds of laborers were laying the bricks. I asked one of them, what are you doing? Aap kya kar rahe hai? Sir, aap to dekh rahe ho, aap to ande nahi hai. Main patthar laga raha hoon. So he got a little wail. I'm laying the bricks. So then I was a little taken aback. I walked a few yards, asked another man who was also laying the brick. Bhaiya, aap kya kar rahe ho? And he said, mere paas ek parivar hai, do bache hai, maata pita hai, inko dekh bal karna hai. Is liye patthar laga raha hoon. So I'm laying the bricks to earn my livelihood and to run a family. Then still I was not happy. I asked another third man who was also laying the brick, kya kar rahe bhaiya? He just looked at me and smiled. Saab, a man coming in court suit asking him what he's doing. Main desh ke liye ek bada mehatu pournas thaan research, vijyan, laboratory bada rao. Three people laying the bricks, see the perception. So I want all of us to perceive, all of you to perceive like the third man. You will, you will become a professional, whether in IT or in mass communication or in journalism, any field which you choose. That is your profession, first man's perception. Second man, you are going to live in a beautiful world, economically powerful India, third world economy. So your GDP will still grow in spite of all this recession, coming down to six, close to six or little above six. But you will come back to double digits sometime. So you will, you will see that happening third world economic power, you are going to live. So you will have a beautiful house, family, and car, whatever you dream will be there. Second man perception. Third man perception is the man who said, I am building some great facility, research facility for the country. You are going to build humanity. 
not just India, not just 1.3 billion people, 7.5 billion people you are going to take care. That is your job. So if it is so, like a third man perception, if you are going to build humanity, you have to equip yourself with knowledge, skills, soft skills, resilience to face challenges, and also become powerful. Resilience is very important. So the final story is pencil story. Now when I open the e emails, you, know, you get a lot of spam mails. Sometimes I get, uh, I was reading one spam mail, which was written pencil story. I was wondering what is this pencil story? So I took, I read this. Then the pencil story goes like this. Assuming, assume that this is a pencil. So I'm talking to the pencil. I created this pencil. So I'm telling the pencil, oh, beautiful pencil. I have created you so sleek and beautiful so that people will come easily and then hold you, use you to write. So I have created this sleek structure. I have given a lead inside which will drive you to write beautifully. No, I have given a lead in the pencil. I have given an eraser on the top. Whenever you make mistake, you can correct it. So I have given an eraser. People will come, sharpen you with knife, sharpener. Don't get worried. In the process, you get sharpened, and then you will, you will be able to write beautifully. Now assume that we are all pencils, and God is coming to us, talk, uh, uh, talking to us. Oh, beautiful pencils. I have created you so beautiful structure, two leg structure, beautiful, with all faculties intact. I have created the structure. I have given a conscience, like lead in the pencil, I have given a conscience in you. That will drive you to walk in the right path, the trajectory of beautiful life. So like lead in the pencil, conscience in you. Now eraser on the top of the pencil, I have given you the ability to correct your mistake, and forgive the other's mistakes, and do not make the mistake again. So I have given a eraser, ability to forgive, and ability to correct, mend. Like pencil getting sharpened with knife and sharpener, you will face challenges, failures, like Kalam faced in SLV, you no know, first failure. So, but then we became successful, similarly Chandrayaan too. First, we made almost there, but we, we didn't succeed. So like that, there will be challenges, failures, criticisms, don't worry about this. Like the pencil getting sharpened by knife and sharpness, this will immunize to face challenge, immunize you to face challenges and come victorious. That's the message on this day of innovation as well as the day of the World Students' Day today. My best wishes and blessings to all of you. Thank you.